Hello everybody, Darren here, and welcome back to Satisfactory. Now in the last episode, I completed all of Tier 7 by advancing three more milestones, granting us the hazmat suit, the hover pack, and the ability to create drones. Now I'd never created drones before, so I really wanted to kind of feel them out in an episode, see how they're built, what they require, what the production chains for batteries are like, and how much they can carry, that sort of thing. You know, their logistics. And then I can kind of figure out in between episodes, how we can incorporate them into the build later on down the line. Now, I also wanted to just take a little bit of a break. The aluminum factory really took its toll on me mentally, so I needed just a bit more of a chill episode to recover, think about what we're going to be doing in the future, that sort of thing. That doesn't mean I've been sitting on my butt, though. In between episodes, I took stock of all the factories we've created and added several awesome sinks to make sure nothing gets backed up anymore. I fixed the motor factory to run more efficiently, one-to-one -one input and output now. The steel factory is the same as are a lot of other ones. And I removed a lot of the random machinery that was just kind of dotted around the map, no longer in use. I also built this new railway leading all the way out here to Blue Crater, which is where we pick up today's episode. So why are we in Blue Crater? Well, why go anywhere? Oil. Simple answer. There are six oil deposits out in, this, out in the southeast of the map which is about two and a half thousand oil per minute that we could be grabbing here and we're going to need it because if we were to push into tier 8 we need a lot more power so power is actually the reason i went around to every factory adding awesome sinks and trying to check what exactly where we're consuming pretty accurately anyway now we're not fully up to full production you know certain things like the aluminum factory still has room to be brought up to 100 percent. it's on about 80 percent so things will fluctuate from time to time and of course something i actually learned is that train stations only actually power on when a train arrives, like the freight stations and that sort of thing. Each one is 50 megawatts of power. So, you know, you have four freight platforms. That's 200 power just sitting there that doesn't go into operation until a train arrives. That's the reason that our max consumption is about 5,000 more than our current consumption because we've got a lot of trains not doing anything right now. When you see a big jump like this, that's probably a train moving or something, something to that effect anyway or getting loaded, unloaded, whatever, and that'll probably calm back down and then chill out again. Although, I don't know, that's actually quite an interesting spike, thinking about it. It's a very significant jump, to jump up by like a thousand like that. But anyway, it's probably trains. Right, so, it is nighttime. One thing I wanted to do in this area really quickly, we've been here before and I put down this radar tower, which is what allows us to see the resources here. There are five hard drives in this area, and if we're going to build more power, we need more oil, and I'm probably going to use the alternate recipe for diluted fuel because everyone says you gotta get it it's supposed to be really good and this would be so much crude oil that turbo fuel wouldn't really be feasible without having to just extract a lot of sulfur create a lot of compact coal and stuff so instead we're just gonna head up this way where i've identified the first site for a hard drive we'll hook it up to power and then i think it said that it needed oscillators i thought it'd be fun just to do it in the first step or the first part of the episode here while it's night time effectively and then we can go around finding the other ones, and we'll just have it on the go in the background, so here we are. Yeah, I noticed that. I don't know what that's about. There's a floating... I also crafted some... homing ammo. Because we're gonna need it. I've already actually cleared out a lot of the fauna around the oil sites, because that's what I was checking their purity and stuff. Which I realized I actually could have just done in the map anyway. Is that guy gone? I don't see him anymore. Oh, he's out there. Somewhere. I don't see him. Okay, well, let's just hook this up then. So power to here. All right, two oscillators. There we go. Boom. And I don't have room for it. Nice. Good job, Darren. Well prepared, you idiot. Uh, what could I get rid of that I really don't think I'll need? Maybe just some of this concrete. I've got so much of it. I know I've got other little bits and pieces, but the concrete... Oh, my God. Oh, it was an autosave. I thought I crashed. <laughs> All right, good. All right, we're good to go. We have an hard drive. We'll just cut that wire now. I'll keep the... Should I get that? I'll leave it, whatever. I don't know what a heat sink even does. Um, we'll come back for it in some of the points. All right, let's just get back to where we want to go. We'll set up a little mom and then start cooking our first hard drive up. There's power slugs and everything around here. So much to grab. So little time. So why would you ever want to move... 2,500 oil on a railway. I hear you scream as you look at the railway in the distance there. Well, it's a very simple reason, and I bet none of you can guess why I do it. 
Go on. Right it comes. I'll let you. I'll give you a minute. Figure out why I would want to move oil via rail rather than just build a power station right here. I bet you none of you get it. All right, are we done? The answer is for fun. I've never moved fluid on a train before, so I thought it'd be fun. I don't think it's efficient. I think it'd be fun. So that's the main reason. So let's build this mum. And we'll pop it down, and we'll put it in this hard drive. I know I could put one up there, but I just, I don't, I, I don't know. Just want to do it here. Where's this hard drive gone, by the way? There we go. Bonk. All right, 10 minutes on the clock. All right, we're back in position. This is full of different things for me to kind of use later on if we run out or if we need them. So we're just going to drive over to the... Actually, I'm not going to drive over. I'm going to drag the um, power with me. But Darren, train stations bring power with them. I like having it via cable. That's the word. I was going to say pipe, and that doesn't make any sense. Should we go up here? Why not? I'll just circle it around this way. And down we go. So we've already hit that hard drive site, I believe. So there's nothing too unusual there for us to see. Although the enemies have come back since one of the latest updates, I guess. Alright, man, gotta love the homing ammo. I don't have much of it, though. It took kind of a bit to, to make, and I don't have it automated, so it takes a while. Alright, let's keep going. And just bring this around down this way. And then we can always just um, zip line back over as well, which I find to be quite fun. Uh, yeah, we can build it out in the water. Is that a problem? <laughs> Alright, I think we're basically here. Yes, we are. So the first two are here, there's two there and two there. So, on the to-do list on the right-hand side of the screen, I have it saying remove bits of terrain, get the foundations down, and then when it's nice and bright, hopefully we'll actually see us building the proper factory. We know, I basically need to bring us up to that height. You could have a railway that kind of comes down or whatever, but I just think it looks a bit better to keep it all consistent height, as rails, railways normally are. Um... And we're going to pump a lot of the fuel and the oil up there. So, again, not efficient, but fun. And a fun logistical challenge. All right, so let's get some land clearance going. We'll break out our novelisks and just throw them on these mushroom cap things. Although, would these give you mycelia, actually? Mycelia would probably be a better thing to get, seeing as it is finite. Um, do I have... I do. Yeah, actually, let's just try to cut down a little bit of this. Yes, it's mycelia. Sweet. All right. Just once the mushrooms are clear, then I can just detonate the bombs. No big deal. All right, good. Throw down a couple more. So the two depo one deposits there, another one's right here, and two are in the cave over there. So I just want to kind of clear a path so I can get um, foundations to kind of add up all the way through this area and be level with each other, or relatively speaking. There's a little doggo over there. Are we good? I think that's pretty much all I want to get rid of. All right, good. And the rest I can just get rid of by hand. Okay, and then I'll just grab these mushrooms, and then we can just slam down. I should have all the ingredients I need to get all the oil extractors, and I have loads of concrete and stuff with me, so should be pretty quick right after this. And then we'll go find our next hard drive when we need it. Uh, but yeah, so depending on what we're going to be getting out of the extractors, obviously we have to separate them into pipes that can handle 600, and then pump it up high. And then we're going to build up a whole new area in the oil processing plant, a third train station that's going to handle fluid. Okay, so first one, oil extractor. And we'll just aim it this way. Looking good. So this is 60 per minute by default, so that's 300 when overclocked, I think. Oh no, it's only 150. Oh wow, this is a impure node. Okay. 150. Let's grab that. Put the other one over here. Maybe stick it facing that direction as well. 
Well, everything's going to have to roughly go that way, thinking about it. So maybe let's do that. Alright, so you're going to need three, and you can go all the way up to 300. So that's 450 in total already. So let's make our way into the cave. Just up here, there should be two, which I scoped out already. These are both pure, I think. Yep. All right, we got two pure here. Oh, we'll just put down some foundations just to make it look a little cleaner, a little more deliberate. All right, there's all six oil extractors in position. So we'll just overclock these ones as well and just see what we can get out of them. So that's another 300, and this I think will be 600. Yeah, okay, so to do the math on these ones... God, I love this area, by the way. The, the fog is so good. The lighting in this place. All right, so to work this out, we have 600 times 3, so that's 1,800. Plus, I think, 300 plus... Was it 150? I think that's what we get here, so that's 3, 4, 5. No, there's another 300, so I think it's plus 600. I think that's how much is here. All right, well, we got our mom thing anyway, so let's have a look. Our oh, ma'am. All right, what do we got? Quick wire cable. Mix it with rubber and quick wire and you get cable. Pure aluminum ingots. You just use scrap to get this instead of scrap and silica. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I just set up so much to do with quartz. And you, you're telling me I could just get it. But I guess it's not as good a rate, right? Well, is it? I don't know. Well, anyway, I'll think about that. And then the other one is fine. Well, actually, we'll get it because I don't want this. All right. So we want to go get another hard drive. Uh, there is one actually right next to me. So we'll just climb up and get that one. Although I think it requires power. Which I've only just dragged here for the first time. So somewhere up above. Might have to equip the um, hover pack, actually, because I'm not really able to get the distance I want. There we go. Now we're talking. Alright, it is hooked up. So let me just get off, off that, and let's deal with these guys. Alright, I'm sorry guys, but you know, it's oil, what can I say? Alright, let's see what we got. Doesn't require anything, just power, boom. Another hard drive, and we'll just stick that in the mum. Oh nice, I found some cable, I actually needed some, I ran out while I was here. Uh, is that it? Some reinforced plates. And that seems to be pretty much it. Yep. Alright, let's cut this. Doesn't need to be here anymore. Alright, awesome. So that is stage one done. Foundations and terrain, for the most part. I mean, I guess more foundations are needed. So I'll just pave this place and then we'll skip ahead. Alright, so I basically just paved the entire area and removed as much of the foliage as possible. The oil extractors are now in place, and I've also worked out how much they're exactly going to be extracting out of the ground once we overclock them. The next job is to get the oil to go up there and actually put down a train station and get it all flowing. So, a lot to do. Um, we've also just got, I think I just heard the little thing ping to say that the next mom is done. It is. Here we go. So, solid steel ingot. Rigor motor or coated cable. Hmm. Mix coal and iron together, but refined coal. I see. Um, yeah, I'm not going to be changing the motor factory anytime soon. To be honest, none of this seems enticing to me. Another way to deal with heavy oil actually sounds kind of good, so I'll just choose that. Um, so I need to go grab another hard drive. There's actually just one, again, just a little further south. So I'll just run and go grab that really quickly, and then we can continue our build. Alrighty, we are here, and there are little spiders around here. Don't like the look of this thing, jeez.
Good thing we have our gas mask. All right, hopefully they'll just stay away for a minute while we can get this hard drive. It needs motors and power, so we've got power with us. <laughs> There's a little stinger trying to get at me. You little scamp. All right, I'll just pick up some of these remains. We can use them for DNA points a little later down the line. Where's that other guy gone? Oh, he died over here to the gas. How sad is that? All right, let's go back and we'll pop this in the mum and then we're pretty much almost done with this area for hard drives, which is kind of cool. All right, great. All right, finally, we're back. So let's just toss that in the mum and we'll be good to go. Cool. Okay, so, like I said, train station. So let me just make my way up there. There's actually a ladder that will get me up there if I can't make it on my own, which I don't think I can with um, zip lines. Alrighty, I've made it. So we can see our two oil extractors there, two more in the cave, and the other two are just down there, one obscured by the weird mushroom wall thing um so basically this is the railway so i've brought it all the way up to this point and then i wasn't sure how this station is going to look i'm still not sure to be quite frank but um we'll just build out i mean how bad can it be we can figure it out just build this out to be nice and thick and then it'll need a kind of a way to loop around itself i reckon that's probably as far as we'll need to go oh i'm out of concrete i left the rest of it in the um in the truck, god damn it. Alright, so I'm up on the train platform at the moment. I kind of extended it out. I had to drag power up here from down below because the railway isn't actually connected to power. It's kind of severed right before one of the stations, so there's no power fielding here from the rail line at least. Um, but I extended out the platform, just had to look around at where I'm going to basically place this down. And it's not too important for this place because it is just going to be one station rather than two because it's only ever going to send things out, not take things in. So we'll give it a, a wide berth on this side, away from the main rail line. And that's facing the correct direction, right? I think so. It's hard to see, yeah. All right, so we'll stick it in the middle right here. Bonk. And there we go. All right, good. So um, now we need to add the fluid. So I think I've worked out that with all of those oil extractors, that's five pipes worth of fuel. And a, fru a fluid freight platform can take two. So we need at least three. So I thought I needed four, but I actually only need three because they actually have two holes each. So that's good. So we'll rotate it that way. One, two, and then we'll have to extend this out. Three. All right. So, yeah, in total, like I said, five pipes are going to be fed in. So, if we have a look, it's 2550. Yeah, 4.25. Um, can you actually go back? You can. Hang on. There we go. So, that's one pipe. That's one. That's one. That's one. So, one pipe is just going to be left with 150 on it, going into one of these sad and lonely uh, things at the back. But the other ones can be totally fine. Just gonna cut these now. They don't need to be there. Um, yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. So we, I'll just have to hook up this rail line here onto the main line, and then we need to figure out how to bring the fluid up here. So I'll probably stick with having some fluid buffers first, because I'm sure while it's loading and unloading, they don't operate much like the regular stuff. Get rid of that as well. I'll have to create like a stairwell or a tower or something to get up and down, just in case power does die. All right, so I've come across quite an interesting little problem that I didn't really think about, and this is probably why you don't do things like move fluids halfway across the map. Basically, I have five pipes going into three platforms here, and the idea being that we can fit all this onto five pipes, so why not do that? Minimize the amount of space, and so on and so forth. 
But the problem there is that we're making about 2,500 oil per minute. And if we only had three platforms, we would have three times 1,600. That's how much a train could take. So we would fill up, the, the we'd back everything up within two minutes. Now the journey from here all the way over to here is obviously going to be more than two minutes. But we can mitigate that somewhat if we just add more and more cars on. So that's what I plan on doing. I might add even one more if we can fit it, although I'm out of cable. I have to get some extra cable. That way we can cut down on the journey time, but it means that we have to have a very long train transporting all this fuel, and it's a big power cost, I suppose, landing at the uh, actual station. But that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to work it out on my own time just now in a minute, uh, see how many we're going to need. But I'm guessing one, two, three, four, five. I'm guessing maybe eight. Eight then times 1,600. That'd be 12,800. So if we went with 12,800 divided by 2,550, which is how much oil we make here, gives us five minutes. Not sure the time it takes to get over there. I know for one train, five minutes, it won't be that much. But if we could have maybe three trains then in rotation, constantly moving in and out, five minutes is a pretty good amount of time, I think, that we could get that done. That means that overall, 15 minutes is what's needed to make a round trip of all three trains. And I think 15 minutes is more than enough to get there and come back, right? I think so. I mean, look how fast they're moving. It's fast enough. Like, you know, it's like 30 seconds you get from there to there. So... We'll see. <laughs> so that's, I just thought it was worth pointing that out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, a little bit of time has passed, but I now think I have it worked out. So this train station now has, I think, 14 fluid freight platforms. Oh boy, how things have escalated. But I can explain why. Um, effectively, the way things were gonna happen was I was gonna have fluid buffers down there collecting and storing up all the oil, and then five pipes were gonna come up here and feed just three. That was the initial plan, just to have a measly three fluid freight platforms. But we worked out that having just three means that we'll essentially fill them all up really quickly. They can only hold 1,600. And if we're producing 2,500 per minute, they're gonna fill up in like two minutes, right? The three of them. So if we extend it out further and further and further, we add more and more storage capacity, increasing the amount of time we have between necessary for trains to arrive and pick up things. And I've also gone with a number that allows for easy division of fluid buffers. So the one on the end is in place already because that's just going to do 150. But the other four pipes that are going to come up here, so there's still going to be five pipes coming up here. So five pumps are necessary in total to get them here. Or at least five pipes need pumps. They're going to need multiple pumps each. <laughs> God, it's gotten so messy. But anyway, yeah, so those four pipes are going to do 600 each, and then the fifth pipe does 150. So that gets us to our 2,550 number. So what we can do is start putting down these buffers right now then and start laying them out. So we need one every every second gap, and they need a bit of distance. So I didn't actually work out. Maybe we'll just get to the very end down here and work from this way out. Um, it might make a bit more sense that way, and we can kind of snap two in a line and make sure they're in the same place. So at least that way, it looks kind of nice. So let's go to the center point here. We'll hold control. We'll snap it back, and there we go. Boom. So that goes one, two, three, and then we have one and this one. So aligned. So that's one, two, three, and then this one. So they're going to be split so that each of the pipe, the 600, is going to be doing 150. 150. Wait a second. No, sorry, 200 each, 200 each. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, the one at the end is doing 150, which makes it a little awkward, but I'm sure we can handle it fine. Sorry, these things are getting in the way. I've lost my power. Yeah, I got a bit confused in my own head there for a second because I was thinking, oh no, this doesn't actually work out, but it's fine. All right, that one there. And then this final one here. So just cut this wire again. Okay, cool. Looking good. Looking all right. Am I getting power from these, even though they're not powered themselves? No. Okay, good. Okay, so we need pipe junctions to go into the center point here and then divide into three, as we mentioned. Uh, probably about there, actually. No, I guess we'll keep it back. Why not? There. That is the halfway point between the two. All right, we'll go with one there. And then they need to come out of every buffer, and then we'll just hook them up right after. So each of these is then going to be doing 200 each.
Alrighty, so 200 each means they only need to be pipeline mark 1 with no indicator. And we'll just go like this. In they go. Simple as. Alright, and then it'll be a mark 2 pipe that feeds out. So basically that's the setup that I gotta replicate over and over again, so I'll just do that now. Alrighty, we are all hooked up. Our lovely forks, as it were. So 200 in each of the smaller pipes going into every freight platform, and then 150 on the one at the end. Alrighty, so um, that was a major effort, surprisingly. Uh, so now we have to figure out how we get the pumps up here. So what we can do, I guess down on the bottom, yeah, I'll put down floor holes, uh, floor hole things next to the fluid buffers on the other side, and then we can kind of figure out how to get the stuff actually into these areas. So just maybe a gap of two out would be good. All right, there we go. So all of these things are now basically hooked up. So they have their pipes coming in, and we have to go down a floor now and figure out how we're going to actually get the pumps and all of that working. So I've got an idea in mind, which is to run all the pipes kind of parallel to each other on the floor below. So I'm just going to cut away all of this area. I don't think any of it's really needed. We can get back some of that concrete. Man, check out the views. Just with the, the lighting and the kind of light fog and stuff, it really does give a huge sense of scale to that thing up there. It's just a giant concrete rectangle at the moment, but I don't know, something about it looks quite cool. So I've laid out the five pipes here on the bottom where I'm planning on sending them up. So these are going to go straight up all the way. And then what I was going to do is build a sort of uh, staircase slash walkway and also a hyper tube that can take me up maybe to various levels, possibly, or probably just all the way. I'm not too sure. Um, I was going to use a blueprint I made a while back. This is the one I've been using before. It's really great. Just like two stairs and a platform and you just do that once, you run up, you snap it, and you keep doing that all the way until you get up to the very top. Um, might actually do it from the top down, thinking about it, because it's I'd like to come out on top rather than... I guess it doesn't really matter. Anyways, and that way, as I'm running up, it takes three, so we'll need three foundations like this to be running in circles. But at least you're going alongside the pipes, and you can add on the pumps where they're needed then as we go up. At least that's the idea. So I'm going to get to work on that now. Maybe I'll just do like one floor just to kind of show you what I mean. I've done it before, obviously, but... Gives you, um, I'm just wondering, should I have that separate? Uh, yeah, I guess so. So it'll be like this. And like that. Alright, so that'll be like one layer. So what I'll just do really quickly is you go like this all the way. And then I'll carve out the bits I want for windows later. Okay, so here we are then. And something like this might be a doorway, and this is maybe where we'll start. So I'll get my blueprint, and I just know that it has to snap. Oh, that's strange. The um, highlighted area looks like it's raised off the ground for some reason. Shouldn't be. But anyway, um, yeah, so I think it needs to be roughly about there. And just to be sure this doesn't clip through the wall. Yeah, that's that's where it goes. And then you just keep doing that, you know, you look at the area that you want it to go to, it's, yeah, it's kind of changed how this works now. Not sure why. It's like at the bottom left corner of it, I guess. But that's not a big deal. Either way, it should just, if we just turn off that and snap it in, like so. And then we can just keep running up and just keep doing that, as long as we just keep snapping it into the same spot. So, you know, it takes a bit of practice because the, the bounding box is quite finicky. Ah, so this is actually why I would need the wall to be here. At least just to latch onto temporarily to get me building. And then I can remove that wall and we can kind of just access the pipes and stuff. So I'm just going to do this until we get all the way up. Alrighty, my spiral staircase is complete. Um, and it leads all the way up. So... Now I just need to bring the pipes up and then latch them onto probably the wall or something. So these are just placeholder to know where the pipes are going to be relatively positioned, but really they're actually going to be coming in from the side. Something like this, probably.
and then they're just going to start pumping up. So that would mean that they need pipeline supports, no wall supports, yeah. And I'll have to put them in every, I don't know, every few foundations, I guess. Maybe about there. And then we'll just stick pumps wherever they're needed, and then we can bridge out to access the pumps if we ever want to. Just Even just aesthetically, so it looks kind of cool doing it. Um, but if I was just to get rid of this, this, and all these little floor holes, we can basically just see what does this look like then. So horizontal to vertical, going straight up. Should look totally fine. Yeah, it's dead straight. Nice. So four of these are going to be 600, and then the one in the end is going to be 300. In terms of, well, it's 150, but I mean in terms of a pipe capacity. And then we can label them and stuff. So that's kind of what we're dealing with. That is what we're dealing with. Um, I suppose, actually... Yeah, they don't need to be pumped. The head lift will take it all the way to here just fine. But the first pump, I've already made a bit of a mistake. The first pumps will probably have to be... Actually, you know, we can just stick them on the bottom here. Just get pumping all the way up. Yeah, that might be fine. So let's go with number eight. Let's mark two. And it's going to be going that direction. I'll just stick it right about there. And, uh, can't rotate it, no? Don't think so. Oh, we can, like this, then. Yeah, that's cool. Alright, there we go. So the first five pumps are down. So we've got five pipes, each one 600, except for the last one, which will be handling 150, so it's just a Mark I pipe. And then these pumps are all Mark II pumps, means they can carry it all the way up 50 meters, I think? And I basically positioned them sideways. I had them the other way, actually, but they are starting to protrude through the wall. So I've just rotated them a little bit. They're thicker lengthways than they are, you know, the other way. So if they're just rotated like this, and then they were clipping each other, so I kind of rotated them just so they're all a little diagonal. So it looks cool. I think it actually looks kind of nice like that. It just worked out that way. All right, so now the spiral staircase is in place. Um, we're just going to basically feed these up and up and up onto the separator layer, which is the layer below the train station where they all get divided then. Um, so yeah, let's continue. Alrighty, so this has taken an extremely long time and it's not the best looking. I'll ob obviously, between episodes, tidy this up and try to make it look a little bit cleaner, but I'm pushing three hours right now and, uh, very little to show for it. So what I'm gonna do is just hook up oil now. I think I can start this thing running. Hopefully we've got the power to sustain it and all of the various pumps and everything. Um, unfortunately, I made a bit of a mistake, and this, I don't know if it's worth redoing much of it, because it would be a lot of effort, but um, I built off of the train railways, like, grid, rather than the world grid, so we're just slightly off with certain things, which is why we have this. But other than that, it's fine. <laughs> um, and, yeah, it's not really a big deal. All right, so, yeah, let's hop down. Let's hook up all of these various... Um, uh, extractors to our pipeline and then hope that it all just works. We'll turn it all on and hope for the best. So I think the very first thing to do then will be grab our pipe from here. This can go plug into this one straight away. That's 600 I think straight up. Yeah, so that's 600. This is, I think this is 300. So this will have to merge with another one. So we'll just put a merger somewhere like here. Grab 600 out of this. Now I'll clean this up as well. I just want to see if it works uh, for the episode, and then in between episodes, I can just clean it up. Um, oh yeah, I forgot to look at what we got. Quick wire cable again, recycled plastic using fuel and rubber, and you get plastic, no way. What is this? Electromagnetic control rods, never seen that before, and we get electric motors. Again, my motor factory is so good, dare I say, that I don't really feel like I the need to do that. We make 15 motors per minute, I don't know if we'll need more, but... I mean, maybe this, maybe this, probably go with the cable one. I'll have to go hard drive hunting, I've got no more. There should be one more in the blue crater area, so I'll go try and find that, but still no diluted fuel recipe just yet. Okay, so this has to be merged with this one, I think, which is 300 as well. Just want to double check that. Yeah. Alright, this is 300, so we'll just bring this up here. And flood it into there. So that way we get 600 together. And just to save a little bit on that plastic material, because I might need it. Switch this to just 
a Mark 1 pipe, so that does 300 all the way around. All right, so this one then is just 300 on its own. Or sorry, 150 on its own. And I think it actually needs to go to the very edge one. And hopefully it's got some of the head left to get there already. I'm banking on that being the case. All right, so it needs to just go into there. Okay, and then there's two 600 slots left to go, and they're the ones that are up here. Um, but yeah, I'll have to look for a way in between episodes to like put some foundations down and make it look somewhat decent, like coming together. I'll probably stack the pipes together, similar to how I've done up there, and maybe color them every now and then or something. I don't know. Got to play around with it for a while. I just simply do not have the time. Because I'll spend like eight hours just messing around. <laughs> I waste so much time doing that. Um, trying to make things look a little bit cleaner. Or moving an entire factory just so like... I don't know. It aligns to something else. Like in a decent way. I've actually done a bunch of stuff over at the aluminum factory. They haven't even showed you this episode. So I guess I'll save it. Um, you may have noticed actually at the very beginning of the episode. I had a blueprints on my hotbar. That I haven't shown before. They're just basically ceiling lights that look really really good. But I'll wait to show them until the episode comes up. I'm really happy with how they look. Um, they're not actually using the ceiling light, they use like the floodlight and they aim straight down, but they're packed with metal beams either side to make it look a little cleaner. Alright, so this is the last one, the last pipe. And um, yeah, now that we've got the hazmat suit as well, I'm able to go grab the last bit of bauxite I need to get the aluminum factory up to speed. Um, I also need to get some quartz, so quartz I'm going to get when I'm building the oscillator factory. Which would probably be the next episode, maybe. Or the one after, at the very least. Next episode, we're going to be building the power plant to actually use this oil. Alright, we're all hooked up. So what we need to do now is basically literally hook them up to power. So I'm just going to grab this here. Attach those together. Alright, so that one into that one, and this one into this one. Alright, so they're hooked up. That's hooked up. That's hooked up. Let's just drag this further. Okay, that hooks those two up. We're just gonna bring this down to here. That is the mains power over there, I think. Alright, we are in business. So that's gonna be a bit of a significant jump for... Oh, interestingly... Oh, I think the reason that this is going up and down is because I just did something to the sulfur train. And it's probably not delivering compact coal. Oh, power might be about to run out. <laughs> um, I'll have to check on that. Because I just hooked up the train station as well so we can get going in a moment. Ah, so we're going to have to get the pumps hooked up as well. So just bring this to somewhere like here, whatever. All right, we're jostling. We're jostling. This one's not jostling. Hasn't gotten anything yet. I'll give it a minute. There's another set of pumps up near the top that need power as well. I feel like I'm in Metal Gear Solid 1. If you know, you know. Yeah, these guys. All right, these need to be hooked up as well. So just grab this to here. Careful. This one needs to just be up, uh, just be nudged ever so slightly. All right, we'll just hook these up together, and that should be basically powered then. Oh, that one on the edge is so hard to get to. Alright, so that's already hooked up. That's hooked up there. This one to here. This one to here. That one's done. And then this one as well. And then we'll grab this and fall. Free fall down to this one. And that should be them powered now as well, I think. And I am out of... Oh my god. Oh my god. Ah. Jesus Christ. Oh, my stomach. 
It's okay, we're fine. <laughs> Give me some of the nuts. Now I'm a bit confused. They didn't um, light up yellow. They should have. So maybe I didn't hook them quite together. I right, have to do this run again. There will be a hypertube in the middle of this <laughs> one day. All right. Yeah, did I not hook you up? Oh, I didn't. Oh, I'm so sorry. All right, the fact that they're pumping at all means that fuel has already reached up here. So the la And if it's reached here, there's no more pumps to go, which means it should reach up there. That's the idea. Still waiting on that left side to get its fuel, but it, it has less in the pipe, so it might just take longer to fill. Oh yeah, if you look down here, it's got it. It's got it. It's on the way. All right, great. Good stuff. Um, so that should feed all my buffers. Um, so we need to build a train. We need to build a train with 13 freight cars. <laughs> Which I, I imagine is going to destroy my rail network because it's going to be longer than certain signal blocks. So I'll have to rethink a few things, but, you know, we'll figure it out. Um, okay, so let's go locomotive. There you go. Bop. And then we need freight cars. 13 of them. It says 14, but just 13, I think. Uh, so that's two, three. Okay. <laughs> oh my god, it's ridiculous. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, I think I've actually gone one longer, but it doesn't matter. We'll just chop it away if we have. Not a big deal. All right, we need to rename the station and then tell it to go here. So we'll call this Blue Crater Oil. Now, as soon as this thing hits the station, the few, the power might freak out. I have to find out what's going on with that. It seems very irregular for just compact coal to be the thing doing it. But um, so this is the train. Edit the timetable. We want it to go to Blue Crater Oil, and then. It will be going to oil processing, uh, well, it'll be imports, but it'll be something else, a different name on it. We'll need a very long platform indeed. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. Until the load or unload is being completed. Save the changes. Won't turn on the driving just for a second. Let's just see how we're getting on. There's some oil in here, which means, oh my God, look at it go. Now that doesn't look right. 400 out of 2400. That's definitely not halfway. So that graphic is... Either the graphic is bugged or it doesn't hold as much as it's saying. Uh, but it's totally fine. It's filling at just about 200 per minute, which is what it should be doing. Obviously it's splitting 603 ways. Yeah. Yeah. Looks pretty good to me. Alright, it means that we've already loaded up. Let's just make sure that the, even the one on the end has something in it, and then we'll tell the train to, do, uh, to come here. Yes, it does. All right. For some reason, all the graphics are halfway up. Except, obviously, they're not in the fluid buffers, but the actual freight platforms themselves. Alrighty. Wow. I mean, that took so much longer than it really should have, to be honest. I mean, just building a few... All that was was six oil extractors and some freight platforms, but that's the problem. And I thought I forward planned this episode, but go my God, things change. Let me start working things out in real time. All right. Um, let's go turn on self-driving. Next station, Blue Crater Oil. I don't need to be here. So it's going to be one, two, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Oh no, it's thirteen. Okay, good. Right, here we go 13 fluid freight platforms all loading at the same time I gotta say I'm somewhat disappointed that it just uses a big crate thing I thought a hose was gonna come out and like pump them in or something although I guess they have to pull out the first thing in the first place it's not a big deal yeah, it still has a different graphic it looks cool 
There's a weight limit. Hey, is it not doing the ones on the end? Oh, it is. It's just so far away that it doesn't actually uh, play the graphic at the same speed. Alright, we are off. Just like that. And this is what the first journey is going to be like. We might as well ride the rails and see how we get on. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, it looks so cool. We could maybe check. Um, how full is it? Yeah, 725 out of 1600. All right, it's gonna be a bit of a journey. And uh, I don't know if I put signals in at the sulfur place, so hopefully we don't collide with anything. Up through the gas. I love riding trains in this game. People, people often say like, why don't you just use, not to me specifically, but what's the need for trains? Why not just use conveyor belts? And it's true, you could just bring a very long conveyor belt across the map. You do not need trains whatsoever. They just cost power and effort and time. But they're cool. <laughs> Look at it. Look how cool that is. <laughs> All right, we're still full speed ahead, which I like to see. There's our motor factory. We're going to be passing by, actually, a few of the different things I've upgraded. So the steel foundry has been changed somewhat. I was testing out metal roofs, so I wanted to see what it looked like with glass panels on top. But the insides is basically the same. Screw factory needs uh, its upper floor finished. I'm going to be getting rid of the copper factory in an episode or two as well. Upgrading it to make use of our new miners and new belt speeds and stuff like that. Transport hub is going to get a little longer as well. It needs to um, handle a few extra goods. It does have two blank co um, parking spaces already, but it needs two more, I think. So much to do. So a little time. Now, this train is not going to be able to make it into this place. So I might have to turn off self-driving. But we'll just keep driving ourselves now. And I might just go straight ahead to the aluminum factory. Why not? Alrighty, looking good. So this is where we will be turning in. Of course, we're going to need a very long platform. Probably turn right here into a much longer platform on this side. We'll just bypass it for now. Oh my god. <laughs> oh shit. No. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, the humanity. It's all right, we'll be fine. God damn, that was rough. I actually was holding left on the uh, on the controls, but it just banked right anyway. It's about time we had one of those collisions, but hey, we survived it, no problems. So the trains are all gonna get freaked out now. What a disaster. Oh my God. All right, re-rail train. Well, we'll see you later. Okay, that didn't really re-rail the way I thought it would. This one is re-railed. Oh, right, I didn't re-rail the other one. <laughs> Let's just back over to the left a little bit. That was the coal train, by the way, which has fall fallen really far. But I think if I just touch on its uh, platform here, it'll get back on and keep going. Yeah, so we just need to um, turn on self-driving. Let it get back on the route. You'll be fine, mate. Alright, totally smooth. That sound, by the way, when I'm getting in and out of trains, that's my hazmat suit unfurling. <laughs> I guess it's a little hot. That was cool. Major collision. All the oil, the oil is spilled everywhere. <laughs> Alright, we'll just head on to the aluminum... Um, factory and I could just show really quickly what the lights look like because I think it is worth seeing and we can say we made this round trip journey and I'll probably have to drive this back and put it back in place and just park it out of the way of all the other guys it's 
There's actually a train up ahead of me. Oh, he's going straight through, is he? Okay, cool. We can just keep going, following him. Alright, let's just leave it here for a moment. Is that still blocking the end, by the way? I think it actually almost is. Holy crap. Alright. Wow. Okay, we're at the aluminum factory. I mean, this episode's gone on very long, so I'm just going to literally show for no point at all, I suppose, here at the end. Just because I'm, I'm vain and I want to, even though I'm going to show it off later anyway. Um, but the work that's been going on in here. So basically, these are the lights. How clean is that? I know they're not on right now, but that's clean AF. Am I right? Looking damn good. Snug. Slim fitting. Looks really nice. So I haven't actually put them everywhere. There's some gaps where they're going to be. But they're in my um, thing. So I can just slot them in if I need to later. As a blueprint. It's not that big of a deal. And then of course, it's business as usual in this place. Although we're looking a little backed up at the moment. Maybe water has gotten backed up or something. Um, I need to lower this down as well. I plan on having like a good amount of signs around the place just to make the place feel a bit more alive. I think it's coming along nicely. I still need to do storage. Actually, that might be the thing that's getting backed up. Yeah, it looks like it is. This is backed up. And so is that and that. So we're just full up on these things. So I need to switch this on. There we go. The machines can flow again. All right. Well, that's going to have to be it, guys, uh, for this episode. Bit of a chaotic one on my end. It's going to be lots of cuts, I'm sure. But at least now, <laughs> the foundations are in place to have this huge amount of oil coming into the oil processing plant. And we're going to use it all now to buff power big time. Um, I need to find that alternate recipe if I can, though. So I'm going to keep hunting for hard drives in between episodes as well and uh, if I don't get lucky then we'll have to just do something else while I'm waiting on finding it because I don't want to be building in the oil processing plant until we get that recipe all right that's gonna be it for me thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one hey everyone thank you so much for watching the video consider liking it if you enjoyed it subscribe for more and if you want to support even further consider becoming a channel member channel members get early access to my videos ad free and also access to my discord where we've just set up a new Valheim and satisfactory server for people to play on Hopefully we can grow a community and add more games and perks in the future. Either way, I appreciate people just watching this far into the video. Thank you.